Why did Jesus have to be baptized? Do you think that Jesus, being the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh, the light of the world, the light of men, the one who gave life to all mankind, the one who created the heavens and the earth, do you think that it was necessary for him to be baptized in water? Or even for him to receive the Holy Spirit? For his own good or for his own sake? That's the question that I want to cover here today with you guys. So stick around and uh, I hope that it's a blessing to you guys. So in order for us to answer that question, we've got to look into the scripture. So one of the first places that we can look is um, in John, in, sorry, in Matthew chapter 3. In Matthew chapter 3, we see where Jesus comes to John to be baptized. And when Jesus comes to John, John says, I'm not worthy to tie the latch of your shoe. But Jesus said, suffer it to be so now, meaning suffer me or, or endure this and do it, meaning baptize me in water, because this is how we will fulfill all righteousness. And you see, here, Jesus was baptized in water. But as soon as he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And John had heard from God that the one upon whom he saw the Holy Spirit descending and remaining, he it was who was the Savior, who would be the Messiah, who is the one that should come, the Savior of the world, Jesus the Christ. So, first of all, um, there's nowhere else in Scripture where we see that the Holy Spirit came upon men and remained. We only ever saw that with Jesus. He's the only example that we see where the Holy Spirit came down, rested upon him, and remained. In other instances, we see with Mary that the Holy Spirit came upon her. We see with Elizabeth, we see the Holy Spirit. With the prophets in the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit was never upon them and remaining with them. We don't see that anywhere else in Scripture. So, Jesus is the only one and He is the example. And why was it so important? Well, we've got to go then to John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus is answering His disciples. And He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. You see, which means if he's the way, we must follow him. If he's the truth, we must listen to him. And if he's the life, then there's no other way to have eternal life except through Jesus. And the Jesus that is written in the scriptures, because his words are recorded here. We have to listen to him, right? Because he's the truth. So... The whole reason that Jesus was baptized is to show us the example that was to come after his death, burial, and resurrection. It was to show us the way that we too must be baptized in water and of the Spirit. You see, and this is exactly what Jesus says, if you want to go now to John chapter 3, you can go and read about Jesus and Nicodemus. And there, Nicodemus comes to him by night. And Nicodemus was one of the most learned um, elders, a, a Pharisee. And he came by night to see Jesus because we can assume that he may have been ashamed to have been seen of his peers. But there was something that was stirring in his heart. And he knew that something was different about this man. And he came to Jesus by night. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God because no man can do the things that you do unless God be with him. You see, and then Jesus' response to that was, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. And then he asked with his carnal mind and his carnal thinking, and he said, can a man enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born again? And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, unless you are born of water and of the Spirit, you will never enter into the kingdom of God. 
You see, so the first time he says see, the second time he says enter. But both times he's talking about being born again. And a lot of people will argue here that he's speaking of water being the amniotic sac when we are born the first time. And that may well be. But I don't think that that is the full meaning of what Jesus is saying. Because in Matthew chapter 3, Jesus came to be baptized in water by John. Do you think he needed to be baptized in water if we don't need to be baptized in water? Never. And what you see there is two types of baptism which actually form one. Because if you look in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and around that area where Peter is, is speaking to the, the, the Jews that are gathered and they've heard you know, the, the, the wonderful works of God in their own tongues as the, as the day of Pentecost, as the tongues of fire, the cloven tongues of fire by the Holy Spirit rested upon the disciples and they started to prophesy. They started to speak the wonderful works of God and every man heard them in their own, in their own tongue. At that time, what did Peter say to them when they were pricked in the heart? He said, they said, what must we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, what was John's baptism that Jesus went to? It was a baptism of repentance. And now you've got the baptism of repentance and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you must repent and be baptized. The water baptism is repentance, and it is an example, and it's an exemplifying of repentance, right? It's an example of, or, or let me say, um, a proclamation of baptism, of repentance. It's a proclamation of repentance. Then you've got the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And these two, in fact, are one because you must repent and be baptized. You see? So, even John said, There is one who comes after me who is preferred before me. I baptize you in water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, Jesus is the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. And that's why you see, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus. So why did Jesus have to be baptized? He had to be baptized so that we would have no doubt of the way that we had to follow. This is the reality of why Jesus had to be baptized in the first place. So do we need to be baptized? Absolutely. Is infant baptism the correct way? Absolutely not. Why? Because baptism in water is a baptism of repentance. So we cannot do that when we're babies. That doesn't mean anything in the process of salvation. We have to be born again, born of water and of the Spirit. Now I want to take you very quickly to Romans chapter 6 just to wrap it all up and see what Paul said to the Roman church and we're looking at verse 3 and it says here know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Hallelujah. So, we must be baptized in water and we must receive the Holy Spirit just like Jesus was. God bless you.